In this video, we're going to take a look at the admin experience using the Typing Club School Edition. We'll start by looking at some different account settings. To get to settings, click Settings on the left-hand side, then click Account Settings. First, you can decide various login options for the account. You can enable login with username and password, login with Google, login with Microsoft 365, or if your account is integrated with Clever or Classlink, you can enable login with these options as well. Next is Google Login Behavior. If you check this box, it'll sign the users out of their Google account when they sign out of their Typing Club account. Next is the Logout URL. You can choose the URL that users will be brought to when they log out of Typing Club. So for example, you could put in your school's homepage. Next are various instructor settings. You can allow instructors to view and manage all students in the school. Allow instructors to add, edit, and delete students. Allow instructors to create custom lesson plans. And allow instructors to create tests. Next are student settings. You can allow students to log in with an email address and no password. Or allow students to change their own password. Next is scoreboard. If you check this box, it'll disable the scoreboard feature account-wide. If you do not check this box, then teachers will be able to decide this on a class-by-class -class basis. And then lastly is partial attempts. If you check this box, it will track students' partial attempts. So if a student starts a lesson but does not complete it, it will still track this. If you made any changes, be sure to click Save Changes. And next we'll take a look at different instructor roles and permissions. So click on Instructors on the left-hand side. Click on the name of an instructor, and then click Edit Instructor. Here we can view the different roles and permissions available. So the roles are Instructor, and instructors have access to their own classes and students from their school. Account Admin, which is a user with account administrator rights, and they'll have the same level of access over the account as you do. Next is School Admin. So this instructor has admin rights for the following schools, and you can select one or more schools for them to have school admin rights for. And then lastly is Billing Admin, and they would have access only to the Billing tab on the account. And then lastly are permissions specific for this instructor. So if you check this box, then this specific instructor can access students from all schools. So this permission is useful if you have an instructor who moves from one school to another and needs access to students from all schools, but you don't want this instructor to have all of the different privileges that come with being an account admin. Next, we will take a look at different lesson plan settings. So take a look at lesson plans and then settings. And here you can decide the default lesson plan. You can either have the same default lesson plan for the whole account, or you can decide it on a grade level. So I could click here to change the default lesson plan for pre-K. So this is the lesson plan that will be assigned whenever a class is created with this specific grade level. So whenever a pre-K class is created, Snow White lesson plan will automatically be assigned. And whenever a kindergarten class is created, the Jungle Junior lesson plan will automatically be assigned. And Snow White is a custom lesson plan that was created for this account, because you get to decide whether your instructors can create custom lesson plans or not. Next, we'll go over a few different ways to set up the account. So the first option would be manually, which is best for small accounts. To add information manually, you could click on students on the left hand side and then add student and then add one student. You would enter all of the information and then click add student. Next would be to add your classes. So you would go to classes and then click add class. Once the class is added, you would click on it. And then you could enable the class code. So if you see here, there's class code, enable class code. So this would allow your students to sign up for your class themselves. So you wouldn't need to add any students to the account. You would just create the class and then give your students either the class code 
or the direct class code URL. And then they'll be prompted to create their own username and password and sign up for your class. The students will only want to use this class code or this class code URL one time to enroll themselves in your class. After that, they'll just use your normal Typing Club school URL. Otherwise, if they keep using the class code, they'll just be creating duplicate users. Another option would be to have your teachers enroll their own classes using either Google Classroom or Clever Classroom. So they would click on Classes and then either click the Google Classroom or the Clever icon. This would upload their classes from Google Classroom or Clever and roster their students. Another option is to upload a CSV file of your students. To do this, you would click Students, Add Student, Import Update Students. You would use the Import Update tool. You would use this tool to add or update multiple students enrolled in the same class. So you would need one CSV file per class. So this is a good quick setup for smaller accounts. Student IDs and class IDs are not required, but the classes must already exist within the account. So you have to add the classes first, and then you can use the import update tool to add the students to the class. So if I click here, it'll tell me all of the information that I need. I can even download a sample CSV file. You can click here to view more information on how to prepare your data. And then when you're ready, you can upload the file, click Next. It'll show you a preview. But if any of these column headers are incorrect, you can change them manually here. You can also decide if you want to skip any of the fields. You would choose the school that this CSV file should be uploaded to and then click Finalize Import. Once the import was successful, you can click Enroll in Class, and then all of the students from this CSV file will be uploaded into the account and enrolled in the class. But again, with the Import Update tool, you do need a different CSV file for each class. But now we'll go over a different option, which is the Data Import tool. To get there, you would click on Tools, and then Data Import Tool. So this is a good option for larger accounts. You can upload all of your schools, instructors, classes, and students, and you only need one CSV file for all of your schools, one CSV file for all of your instructors, one for all of your classes, and one for all of your students. So you can really set up your whole account on an admin level just using four CSV files. If you click here, it'll show you a preview of everything that you need and what is required and what isn't. Again, you can download a template file. And then when you're ready, you would upload the file, click process file, and then you would scroll down and you would be able to see all of the files that you have processed and you can view details on them or process them again if needed. The last option is we also offer full integration with Clever or Classlink for paid school accounts who purchase 200 or more student licenses per year. So if you qualify for this and if your school utilizes Clever or Classlink, you can reach out to our support department and then we will get you all set up and then all of your information will update daily during the sync. Next, we'll take a look at the Analytics tab. So here you can view some information and you can view it on either an account, school, grade, class, or student level. You can view it daily, weekly, or monthly. And you can set your own date parameters to view the report. You can see a ton of different raw data, speed, accuracy, real accuracy, coverage, new lessons, earned stars, earned score. You can expand all of this. And then once you get to classes or students, you can also filter it by school, grade, class, or lesson plan. 
you can expand a student and then you could click show growth and average and then you would see all of their growth throughout this time period and you can also export any of these reports to a CSV file as well and then lastly we'll look at different class reports that are available so you would click on classes click on the name of a class and then click reports then you can view all of the reports that are available for a specific class and there's a summary of each so you can find which one will best suit your needs.